New York is a real magnet for all travelers. It is in this city that you can immerse yourself in the atmosphere of art, the latest trends, rich history, and incredible events. Here adventure awaits at every corner. But any person decides for himself what to see in New York in the first place. It should be taken into account that one day is not enough for this, you will need at least a week. This list of classic and non-obvious sights of the city, will help you get acquainted with New York, feel its rhythm and understand what its secret is. Statue of Liberty The first thing that comes to mind of a must-see in New York City is the Statue of Liberty on the island of the same name. The majestic goddess Libertas greets all adventurers arriving by water. It was she who was seen by millions of immigrants who came to America in the late 19th and early 20th centuries in search of a better life. After overcoming 354 steps, you can climb to the top of the statue, to its crown. From here you can enjoy a beautiful view of New York Harbor. An undeniable symbol of the Big Apple, whose construction was watched by the whole world. The images of the builders at work are still stunning to this day. The Empire State Building should be explored from the first floor. You should definitely visit the lobby, which is 30 meters long and three floors high. Here there are beautiful panels depicting the seven wonders of the world and one more, the eighth. It is, of course, the Empire State Building itself. Also do not miss the opportunity to climb to the open observation deck on the 86th floor. New York Midtown with the Empire State Building at sunset. Central Park is an oasis in the middle of Manhattan. It is one of the largest and most popular green spaces in the world. Central Park has repeatedly been the hero of movies and books. One day will not be enough to see all of its iconic sights. This is a great place in New York City to take the kids. Once here, you should definitely take a stroll along Central Alley, check out the famous Bethesda Terrace with its fountain, have a picnic on the Great Lawn, see the Belvedere Castle and relax by the Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Reservoir. Brooklyn Bridge One of the most recognizable bridges on the planet is the Brooklyn Bridge. It connects the tourist areas, Brooklyn and Manhattan. It is a must to walk on this ancient giant across the East River Strait. Here you can make beautiful photos, see panoramas of the two largest burrs at once and watch the movement of ships. It was opened on May 24, 1883 and at that time was the longest suspension bridge in the world. After six days, rumors began to circulate about the instability of the structure. To reassure people, 21 elephants were carried across the bridge. At the height of the Cold War, a secret bomb shelter was created here, the entrance to which was disguised in the wall of the support on the Manhattan side. It wasn't discovered until 2006. It takes about 45 minutes to walk across the East River. Flatiron Building The Flatiron Building is located at the intersection of Broadway, 5th Avenue, and East 23rd Street. Although it looks more like a proud ocean liner rather than a huge iron, the name is already firmly behind it. This architectural marvel was built in 1902 in the Beaux-Arts style on a complex triangular plot. The building consists of 22 floors and has a height of 87 meters, which no longer amazes anyone, but the flat iron building is still one of the main attractions of New York City, which is worth seeing. It is also still a prestigious office center where only rich companies can afford to rent. Times Square Thousands of advertising lights and crowds of people, this is Times Square. Here is a grand New Year's Eve celebration with the performance of world stars and colorful fireworks. What is there to see in New York's main square? Check out Madame Tussauds Wax Museum and relax sitting on the red staircase. Admire One Times Square, one of the world's first skyscrapers, known for its unusual shape and for housing the headquarters of the New York Times. One Times Square in New York City is a must-see for every tourist. Broadway Theater Five minutes from Times Square is the famous Broadway Theater. In fact, it is the common name for a group of four dozen theaters that are located in the Manhattan neighborhood of the same name. The most iconic genre of works that are staged on these stages is, of course, the musical. 
The most popular musicals of all years are The Phantom of the Opera and Cats. In 2015, the scaffolding exploded production about the founding father, Hamilton. It won 11 Tony, Grammy, Drama Desk, and even the Pulitzer Prize for Best Drama. Central Station The Central Station is the place from which you started to get to know the city before the large-scale development of air transportation. By the ancient clock in its lobby, appointments are still made. The facade of the building is decorated with majestic Tiffany clocks framed with sculptures and bas reliefs. The ceiling of the station is adorned with an image of constellations turned mirrored. Here is another place to visit in New York, the Whispering Gallery. The lower hall of the station has four arches connected by the ceiling. If you stand in one corner by a column and whisper something, the person at the other end of the hall will hear it. And that's at a distance of 15 meters. Rockefeller Center What else is worth seeing in New York on your first visit is Rockefeller Center, a complex of high-rises built in the Art Deco style. New York's main Christmas tree is displayed here every year. The entire courtyard is decorated with festive illuminations and sculptures. Also in Rockefeller Center, near the pool with a statue of Prometheus, the famous skating rink is installed. These 19 buildings house stores, offices, restaurants, television studios and an observation deck that offers spectacular views of Central Park and the Empire State Building. National September 11th Memorial and Museum On September 11, 2001, a tragedy occurred in New York City that changed everything. With the Twin Towers, familiar life came crashing down. Now on this site is the National Museum and Memorial dedicated to this event. The complex is built on the site where the towers were located and is designed in the form of two large black pools with artificial waterfalls, each with an area of four square kilometers. Around them, on bronze plates, are engraved the names of all the victims who died on September 11th in the towers, the Pentagon, and Pennsylvania, including passengers and crews of planes hijacked by terrorists and people who died during the rescue operation. Also on the memorial are the names of the victims of the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. The museum features exhibits related to those terrible events. The most unusual place for walking in New York is the High Line Park. It appeared on the site of a freight railroad line, which appeared here back in the 1930s, 10 meters above the ground. Such a decision allowed to relieve the city streets and significantly reduce the number of traffic accidents. After 50 years, the road closed and remained in this position until 2009, when the High Line Park opened here. In the design, the creators preserved the rails by breaking up the flower beads and planting trees. Benches are placed along the walkway where you can relax while looking at the high rises. About 5 million people visit this park every year. The High Line at Dusk with City Lights High Line Park Copyright Francois Roux slash Shutterstock One World Trade Center One World Trade Center is the tallest skyscraper in the Western Hemisphere. The observation deck here deserves special attention. The way to the top begins with a stone tunnel, along the way tourists are told from a loudspeaker that this is where the construction of the tower began. Then comes the Skypod elevator ride. It is equipped with interactive panels, where the excursion into the history of the Big Apple development and the construction of One World Trade Center itself continues. On the 102nd floor, where the observation deck is located, a show is shown on screens. When the show ends, the screens rise to reveal a fantastic view of the city that every tourist should see. Wall Street The main financial artery of not only the city and the country, but the whole world, Wall Street. This is the place to go to feel the pulsation of stock exchanges and the smell of big money. An integral element of this street is the statue of a bull, near which crowds gather for selfies. Another symbol of the city, the Trinity Church, is located here. It is a grand neo-Gothic building that hosts free live music concerts. Museum of Modern Art Another must-see in New York City is the Museum of Modern Art. It is the first museum in the world to start collecting the latest works. 
it is located between 5th and 6th Avenue in Manhattan. One of the world's most famous and significant paintings, Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night, is on display here. Also in MoMA are works by Matisse, Cezanne, Gauguin, Kandinsky, Picasso, Chagall, Pollock and other prominent masters. The upper floors house temporary exhibitions, while the lower floors house permanent exhibitions. On two underground floors there is a movie theater, the cost of visiting which is included in the price of the entrance ticket. Musical exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art. Those who are wondering, what else to do in New York, are recommended to visit Vessel. This is an extravagant structure without walls that appeared in the city in 2019. In fact, it is a large-scale observation deck with stairs and platforms. In total, Vessel consists of 16 floors and has a height of 46 meters. You can wander here for hours, with each step and floor observing a new view of the city. The Vessel also stands out with its unusual bronze color against the steel skyscrapers. The Metropolitan Museum of Art is the largest gallery in the United States and one of the largest such museums in the world. It is impossible to see it in one or even two days. Creativity here begins with the entrance tickets, they are made in the form of multicolored badges, which should be attached to your clothes. The museum has about two million exhibits, from the times of ancient Egypt, Rome, and Greece to the present day. The most unique unit is the Anna Wintour Costume Institute. This exhibition is dedicated to the history of fashion and counts almost 31,000 items of clothing. This institute annually organizes a Met Gala ball with a certain theme, to which Hollywood celebrities come in the most incredible outfits. New York Public Library This is the second largest library in the United States and the fourth largest in the world. It was founded on the money of the richest man in the United States, John Astor, who in 1848 bequeathed $400,000 for its creation. At that time there was already a similar library in the city. At the end of 19th century it was decided to unite them on the money of the deceased governor of New York Samuel Tilden. In 1911, the grand opening of the new library building took place, which at the time was the largest marble structure in the country. Curiously, seven levels of book depository shelving were located beneath the building. And under Bryant Park, Another archive was built in 1991. The New York Public Library holds an original letter from Christopher Columbus, the Declaration of Independence drafted by Thomas Jefferson himself, and a 15th century Gutenberg Bible. Coney Island. This is an incredibly atmospheric peninsula in Brooklyn. There are miles of sandy beaches, a promenade, a large number of attractions, restaurants, bars, and eateries. In the 19th century, when villas of rich New Yorkers appeared here, Coney Island was still an island. At the beginning of the next century, the channel was filled in and the subway was laid here. In 1884, it was here that the world's first roller coaster opened. For more than 100 years, since 1916, Nathan's famous diner has been operating, which still sells hot dogs according to the original recipe. Its address hasn't even changed in that time. In the summer, Coney Island hosts a colorful mermaid parade, preceded by a hot dog eating championship and followed by a parade featuring decorated retro cars. For this event, all participants try to choose the most original costumes related to the marine theme. Another indispensable symbol of New York City emerged in the 1960s thanks to the efforts of philanthropist Solomon Guggenheim. The outlandish museum building stands out against the background of classic urban architecture with its unusual shape, which is hard to confuse with other world landmarks. Architect Frank Lloyd Wright originally conceived that visitors would get acquainted with the exposition by taking an elevator to the seventh floor, and then descend on foot, on a spiral ramp. The Guggenheim Museum has about 6,000 paintings, sculptures, and graphic works of 19xx centuries, Kandinsky, Chagall, Cezanne, Pollock, Warhol, Van Gogh, Gauguin, Picasso, Rousseau and other masters. There are also various performances, lectures and educational and entertaining programs for children. 
What other park should you visit besides Central Park and the High Line? Bryant Park, of course. It is not as popular and promoted as the above, but no less beautiful. Its territory is separated by 5th and 6th Avenues, as well as 40th and 42nd Streets. Originally there was a cemetery, then a drinking water tank, an incredible Art Deco iron and glass palace, and finally a park. However, by the 1970s and 1980s, drug addicts and homeless people began to congregate in the area, the fence was broken, the lawn was trampled, the fountain didn't work, and the street lights were broken. In the late 1980s, a non-profit foundation took over the park and completely revitalized the area. The main distinguishing feature of Bryant Park is the chairs that stand here instead of benches. At the same time, they are the main source of its income, chairs can be bought in the online store or ordered a nameplate. This is the most visited park in the world in terms of the number of guests per acre. Here you can play ping pong, do yoga, tai chi, fencing. Watch outdoor movies in the summer and ice skating in the winter. American Museum of Natural History This is one of the best museums of this subject in the world. It is familiar even to those who have never been to New York, as it was the site of the events of the movie franchise Night at the Museum. Its connection to Hollywood doesn't end there. Here you can watch educational movies voiced by international stars such as Meryl Streep, Liam Neeson, Tom Hanks, Harrison Ford, Robert Redford, and others. From October through May there is a butterfly garden, where you can see more than 500 of these fantastic creatures of all shapes and sizes. The museum has a giant sequoia spine, Lucy, the most complete skeleton of an ancient human ever found, a statue from Easter Island, a mammoth skeleton, and a full-size model of a blue whale, which is amazing in its size. Some of the most significant exhibits are the remains and mummy of dinosaurs. The museum also has a wonderful exhibit on Native Americans. Madison Square Garden This is one of the world's most famous venues for sports, music, and entertainment events, which can hold up to 20,000 spectators. Performing at Madison Square Garden is a dream for many artists. It is the only venue where each member of the Beatles performed separately. Madonna, Elton John, and Michael Jackson have sung here, Muhammad Ali has battled here and Grammy ceremonies have been held here. It is the home arena for the New York Knicks basketball team and the New York Rangers hockey team. Madison Square Garden is also home to a movie theater, theater, restaurant, conference rooms, and television studio. Everyone can visit the backstage of this giant, just sign up for a special tour. Its program includes a visit to the dressing rooms, dressing rooms, and exhibition. All participants of the tour can get to the field, ice arena, or stage, depending on what event is planned for the near future. Chelsea Market is among the top must-see places in New York City. It is the city's premier gastronomic market. It is located in a former industrial district and takes up an entire block. Part of the High Line Park runs past this building. The famous Aria cookies were made here in 1912 when the National Biscuit Company, now known as Nabisco, was located in this house. Chelsea Market is a huge complex with restaurants, coffee shops, bars, pubs, stores, jewelry stores, studios, and offices, including Google and YouTube. It is rightfully one of the best food courts in New York City, where you can enjoy gourmet seafood desserts, Italian, American, Mexican, Chinese, Japanese and other cuisines of the world. The lobster sandwich at Lobster Place, and the oysters at Cull and Pistol Bar are a must-try here. Buy unique vintage items at the local flea market. Little Italy The old neighborhood in Manhattan, where immigrants from Naples, Calabria and Sicily lived in the 19th century, is known for being the birthplace of the Italian-American Mafia during the Great Depression. Not surprisingly, this is where the movie The Godfather took place and where the great director Martin Scorsese grew up, who became famous for his gangster-themed movies. The neighborhood is still home to family restaurants with the best Neapolitan pizza and original grocery stores. Every Friday and Saturday, the streets of the neighborhood are closed off to cars, 
and trays of Italian pastries, desserts, and gelatos are set up. In September, Little Italy hosts a large-scale St. January celebration, complete with a parade, dancing, fair and musicians. All of this lasts for 10 days. This neighborhood is also home to three churches of different denominations. A legendary New York City landmark laden with tragic flavor. This house was built back in the late 19th century in Neo-Renaissance and Neo-Gothic style. According to legend, the building got its name because at the time of its construction it was far removed from the densely populated center of the city, as Dakota Territory, now the states of North and South Dakota. This house could be seen in the movie Rosemary's Baby. However, the building's greatest and, unfortunately, saddest fame was brought to the building by the assassination of John Lennon. He was shot and killed by Mark Chapman in the archway while returning from the studio with his wife Yoko Ono. In Central Park, across from the Dakota, a mosaic with the word Imagine on it commemorates this horrific event. The place is also named after the Beatles song of the same name, Strawberry Fields. In addition to the Lennon couple, the house has been home to Boris Karloff, the same one who played the Beast in 1931's Frankenstein, the great ballet master Rudolf Nureyev and other famous personalities over the years. Cloisters Museum This is a branch of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which is located in Manhattan in Fort Tryon Park. Its entire exhibit consists of European medieval artifacts. It is the only museum of its kind in the United States. The first building was opened in 1914, thanks to sculptor George Barnard. Before construction of the building began, he brought in cloisters, covered arched galleries surrounding the courtyard, from five medieval French monasteries. In 1925, the museum was sold to John Rockefeller. The current cloisters building opened its doors in 1938 on the banks of the Hudson River. In essence, the architect simply linked five cloisters, open galleries, into one harmonious structure. Wanting to keep the adjacent parkland from being developed, Rockefeller bought it. In addition to the ancient architecture, rare tapestries, stained glass windows and sculptures are worth seeing here. The road to the museum alone, with a gorgeous view of the river, is already worth the trip. Fifth Avenue one of the most famous streets in the world, home to exclusive boutiques, museums, and architectural landmarks. It divides Manhattan into east and west parts, from it the numbering of streets, increasing from south to north, and houses begins. Due to the fact that in the early XX century wealthy people began to move here, large banks, department stores, galleries and museums appeared here. Thus, Fifth Avenue became the cultural and business center of New York. Many guidebooks emphasize the museum mile here, where they are concentrated especially densely. It begins with 82nd and ends with 105th Street. It is here that the Guggenheim Museum and the Metropolitan Museum of Art are located. In addition, Fifth Avenue is home to the Empire State Building, the New York Public Library, St. Patrick's Cathedral and St. Thomas Church. The Metropolitan Opera is one of the world's leading opera houses. It is on PAR with the Vienna State Opera and La Scala in Milan. The walls of this theater remember Enrico Caruso, Fyodor Chelyapin, Sergei Dyugulov, Anna Pavlova, Maria Callas, Placido Domingo, Montserrat Caballi and other legendary artists. The Metropolitan Opera was founded in 1880 with funds from patrons and was originally located on Broadway, it moved to the new premises of Lincoln Center in 1966. It officially opened on October 22, 1883 with Charles Gounod's Faust. Metropolitan Opera season runs from September through April, and in May and June the company goes on tour. In July, the theater holds a festival with free productions in city parks. Chinatown More than just a neighborhood, this is a true cultural phenomenon, a cluster of Eastern cultures from all over Asia. Manhattan's Chinatown is the largest after San Francisco's and the third largest by area after San Francisco and Vancouver. It was founded by Chinese immigrants from Guangdong in the late 19th century.
Both tourists and locals come here primarily for the exotic food. There are restaurants of Chinese, Vietnamese, Filipino, Indonesian and other cuisines. Be sure to try Peking duck, seafood of various variations and Chinese dim sum. In Chinatown, you can learn the intricacies of oriental medicine and try some traditional treatments. The Museum of Chinese Immigration History displays various documents, photographs, and artifacts. It has a special flavor in winter during the Chinese New Year celebrations. New York Botanical Garden This is a major attraction in the Bronx that is often forgotten by tourists. It was created by a botanist at Columbia University, who was so impressed by the Royal Botanic Gardens on the outskirts of London that he and his wife decided to create something similar in New York City. A site was chosen in Bronx Park, which housed a stone tobacco mill, the oldest in the United States, that still stands today. Another notable structure in the Botanical Garden is the Greenhouse, opened in 1902. During its construction, a large amount of glass and metal structures were used, which gave the building an incredible lightness and sophistication. Inside the greenhouse are cacti, palm trees, tropical, carnivorous and aquatic plants. Also housed on the grounds are a large rose garden, relic forest, conifer arboretum, azalea garden, rockery and North American plant area. It is an incredible place in Brooklyn, where the best of New York's gastronomic and bar traditions are gathered under one roof. On the area of more than 2,200 square meters there are 21 cafes, two bars, an open kitchen where you can watch the process of food preparation, and one of the walls is decorated with a video installation. There is everything from cakes to oysters, from Italian to Thai cuisine. The fifth floor regularly hosts performances, musicians, master classes, and children's events. And the Terrace of Time Out Market New York offers a great view of the Brooklyn Bridge. Soho is an upscale neighborhood in Lower Manhattan. Back in the early 19th century, there was a swamp here, which was gradually drained. By the middle of the century, cast iron houses began to be built here, which turned Soho into an incredibly beautiful neighborhood. It is the only place in the United States where buildings in this style are still standing. In the 1960s, the neighborhood was embraced by progressive artists who coined the acronym SOHO, south of Houston. The most impressive street is Green Street, which hasn't changed in a century and a half. The most impressive building is the Hall Out Building, built in 1857 to resemble the Venetian Library Building. Today, SOHO is full of galleries, coffee shops, restaurants, and fashion boutiques, Chanel, Polo Ralph Lauren, Prada, Vivian Westwood, Marc Jacobs. It is also home to one of the oldest bars and restaurants in the city, Finelli Cafe.